welcome to the Holiday and Cruise Clinic. I'm Gemma Gofton with another edition of the programme that aims to make your next cruise or holiday as problem free and relaxing as possible. So if you have a holiday, cruise or travel related question, here's how to get in touch. So you can search for us on Facebook and Twitter, just put Holiday and Cruise Channel in and you'll find us. Or what about sending us a question to our website? That's www.holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk. Or what about putting a post a post? What about putting something in the post for us rather? The address is Holiday and Cruise Channel, Cavendish House, Brighton Road, Liverpool, L22 5NG. Now in today's programme we're discussing all-inclusive cruising. This style has redefined the traditional notations of luxury cruising with innovative excellence, bold itineraries and high standards of personal service. And here to tell us more about all-inclusive cruising is Natalie Reed from Crystal Cruises. Thank you so much for coming in and joining us in the studio. You're welcome. Very kind of you. Now cruising is becoming more and more popular, am I right? Absolutely. What's the reason? I, I think um, there's a lot more choice now and uh, more destinations. The old fashioned style of cruising, transatlantic has changed and the, the choice of restaurants, cocktail bars, we're attracting a lot younger audience as well as some of our still traditional cruisers. Well, that's interesting that people are becoming younger who want to cruise. Well, mm. because I must admit, I'm sort of early to mid forties, but it does appeal to me now and some of my friends as yeah. well. And is that because of what's on offer? Absolutely. You have everything from the shows that you want to go and see to piano bars, especially if you do, as we've mentioned, choose an all-inclusive. You know, that, that could make a, a great girly holiday, a great couple holiday, and more and more families are cruising now as well. And what about value for money? Because I'm not quite sure what's actually included in the price that I pay. Okay, again, if you know, this is why it's so great to choose all inclusive, and it's so important when you're looking at your cruise to actually look at what that cost is. So, you could look at just the cruise cost, but actually, when you come to the end of your cruise holiday, it might originally seem like quite a good deal, but actually, by the end of your holiday, you've got a bar bill, you've got a bill for the gratuities speciality coffees and all these things can really really add up so actually to go away and know that, you know i'm sure many of us have been on an all-inclusive holiday on a land you know in turkey or wherever so actually you're doing that same concept but on a cruise so you just go away and you don't have to think what hidden extras are going to be included at the end and it makes for a very relaxing holiday. So it might be that the actual, the initial price that you see, you might think, oh gosh, that's a bit expensive. But if you break it down, that's when it becomes value for money. Absolutely. Okay. Um, is cruising for everybody? Because I don't know if, would I be bored at sea? Is there going to be things to do? Will I get seasick? There's no such thing as a wrong cruise for somebody. It's just they've gone on the wrong cruise. So there really is something from everybody. I mean, you have small expedition style, yacht style cruising, right through to obviously great big ships with lots and lots to do, to, you know, the ships that we represent that are more kind of around a thousand uh, clients, uh, lots of choice, really elegant cruising. If you like good food, good wine, and of course the destinations that you visit as well. Well, I'm guessing that's why people choose a cruise, is the des it's destination led. It is, yeah, yeah, predominantly. Um, what about all-inclusive cruising? Are things like, I don't know, tips included? Because that's when I really start to panic because I don't know who to tip We're and English. what to tip them. Yeah. You can't tip. Uh, no. well, I just, we just don't seem to get <laughs> no. it right, do we? No. Because you think, well, do I tip this person every time I see them? Yeah. Or do I not tip them at all? I end up sort of panicking and not tipping them enough. Yeah, no. I mean, again, this is one of the things to be conscious about when you're looking at booking your holiday. So if you go um, with us on a six star all-inclusive luxury cruise, then your gratuities are included. So, oh, so you don't, don't need to stress. You don't need to stress. I guess that as well, just ask. Somebody will tell you, won't they, ahead of yeah. time, so you'll know where you're at. Yeah. Now, I have to say, all-inclusive and kids, for me, is a godsend because those cans of pop, those lollipops, those ice creams, those bits all add up. So does it work well, all-inclusive cruising with kids? It does, yes. Um, for the right families, we, because we are an ultra luxury cruise ship, we must admit we don't have climbing frames or wave machines, um, but we do have a fantastic kids club. 
We tend to find um, we have a very, very high repeat business, it's nearly 80%. And actually, um, how we started introducing families to cruising with ourselves was um, some of our repeat clients would actually want to bring their families on board because it was their special, it was a 60th birthday celebration or a special anniversary. So they wanted the entire family to come and celebrate. It wouldn't happen in my family, unfortunately, because my mum was one of 10. But, <laughs> but no, that, that would add up. That <laughs> would add up. But yeah, and so the great thing with cruising, it's a bit like skiing. It's one of those things that um, the whole generation, right from grandparents down to children to teenagers can all enjoy it and you can go off for the day all go and see and do different things on the ship and then join each other and at dinner time and talk about what you've been and seen and done that day and I guess you can't really do that on a holiday because when you're on a an holiday a land-based holiday you are trying to please everybody saying oh yeah. are we all okay to go to the beach do we all want to go to the water park do we all want to do this whereas if you're on a cruise you can go off and do that you go off and do that and like you say, a cocktail and a, a glass of pop at the end, you can all chat about yeah. it. Um, what about the benefits of sailing from the UK? The benefits of sailing from the UK, the obvious, you don't need to fly. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's very much, it's I guess it's just that hassle of, of not having to go through airports. So it's the ease of it. I guess also, for me, uh, luggage, because I yeah. now don't have to just take whatever it is, 23 kilos, 22 kilos, 20 in some places. So you can take as much as you want, really, can't you, within reason? Yeah, don't you can. Don't bring the kitchen sink. I mean, this is a thing on the cruise lines. You can take as much as you like. It is the airline. And also, for me, travelling from the UK takes a little bit of the stress away because you don't have to do get to the airport and then park at the airport and then... The airport itself can be quite stressful, so you're just getting yourself to the port. You are. At your own pace. You are indeed, yeah. yeah. Um, what about exotic destinations for cruise holidays? Take your pick. Um, you know, the South Pacific. South America is the new hot destination. It certainly Ooh. seems to be. I was lucky enough to travel there um, for a few weeks last year and actually logistically as a country it's, it's very big and there's not much infrastructure so that's when cruising really comes into its own um, you've got beautiful places like Patagonia the Chilean fjords you can actually go all the way down to the bottom and, and incorporate Antarctica um, into your cruise so South America is a really hot destination another one is Asia um, I think you know traveling to somewhere like Asia you have a really strong um, food barrier perhaps and communication barrier with the language and it perhaps puts people off traveling to Asia whereas actually if you go on a cruise you get to go and see all these amazing destinations but you have the reassurance to know of an evening that you're going back on board your ship and the nice thing that we do is we and I know a lot of the other luxury lines do is that say you're in Beijing we have three nights in Beijing so that you really get to experience that destination. And would you, I would think really, I mean, I've never done Beijing or anywhere like that, but to get a taste, the overnight experience of somewhere like that at night time for me would be the real grasp of it. Yeah, it is. It's, it's something, feedback that's come from our clients more, if you look at our overnights compared to say sort of five years ago, it's, it's quadrupled easily. It's, it's very, very popular now. Even in our European destinations, we do a lot of overnights. In your opinion then, has cruising opened up the world for us? Because yes. we wouldn't necessarily have gone before. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, people just don't do a cruise holiday now. They do a flight, rail and a cruise holiday. For example, Alaska is not uncommon to do a seven night cruise tied in with a train journey and then your flights and your land so yeah oh is it easy to sort of tag on to these things because I, I mean i've no idea i wouldn't know where within to start. reason within yeah. reason yeah so, so with alaska we do a program with the rocky mountaineer oh fabulous okay my biggest panic of cruising clothes what do i wear um i i, I if i get something wrong wardrobe wise it ruins my holiday it really does so do i need to be for cruising all dressed up in a hat and a no ball oh i'm disappointed no. um well first of all we're a six-star cruise company so we're not going to tell our clients how to dress it's casual elegance um the only way that i really think you could get it wrong is if you went into the dining room with flip-flops 
perhaps some shorts on and you know and we would just very nicely say why don't you eat perhaps in our open air restaurant or have why don't we order you room service tonight you know we do it in a very very elegant way but um on a seven night cruise we would have one formal night now cruising is changing you know we are we talked about a younger audience compared to you know the older audience so it's about keeping everybody happy you know our more traditional cruisers really do like to dress up they like to wear the di dinner jacket with the dicky bow but perhaps a younger cruise customer wouldn't want to do that so we've actually made um, our formal nights black tie optional which basically means us ladies can get our dresses out but if your husband or partner doesn't want to wear a formal dinner jacket as long as they're wearing a suit on the formal night then that's absolutely fine um, the other nights as I mentioned it's casual ele elegance and actually even on our formal night I mean the great thing about traveling with us we have six different choices of restaurants so if you didn't want to eat in the main restaurant on the formal night you could eat in our open-air restaurant or in one of our, our specialty restaurants but I love the formal night I would be really the one for me. enjoy it. I mean, when do we get the opportunity to wear dresses anymore and exactly. really dress up? And you walk in and the ambience in the main dining room is fantastic. Thank you. Well, we're having a quick break, but okay. uh, don't go anywhere because we've got plenty more questions. If you're new to cruising, then this is our first time guide to cruise holidays. And it's well worth asking for because it's absolutely free of charge. Just give us a call 03330032216. Now, calls will be charged at standard network rates. You can also ask for a copy through our website, www.holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk. And whilst you're asking for this, we'll take a quick break. See you shortly. Holiday and Cruise Clinic. It is lovely to have you with us. In today's programme, we're discussing luxury cruising and Natalie Reed is still with me. <laughs> now, let's talk about accommodation because it, there's so many different types, isn't there? And there's inside cabins and outside cabins and balconies and yeah. you perhaps get a little bit lost with it all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have outside uh, picture windows. Um, which are great if you're perhaps first to cruising. Um, you're not sure if you want to spend too much money, but you want a, a nice lead-in uh, size stateroom with a nice picture window. And then we lead up to our veranda rooms, which are our most popular. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you have everything from um, butlers. You can have your own private butler right through to the top suites which are incredible. Now, I'm liking the sound of these butlers. That sounds very exciting as well. Um, what about activities uh, for people to do on board? Because my worry would be, we're at sea for a day or two, and I go, oh, I'm a bit bored, what can I do? Um, what, what's on offer in the, on, on cruises? It's a bit of an in-house joke that there's actually, you know, we give you a little diary calendar every day, and there's actually more to do at the days of sea than there are at port. The great thing is, it's all about choice. So if you want to just sit back with a cocktail, chill out, read your book, you can do that. But you've got everything from learning, um, practicing your golf swing with a PGA golf instructor, to playing tennis on a paddle tennis court. You have fantastic gym and spa facilities. And then right through through the um, learning centers from Berlitz language courses. So we were talking about South America earlier. If you want to pick up a bit of your Spanish, brush up on Spanish, um, one that I definitely need to go on, how to use your iPad. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then learning how to use a uh, camera, photography. So, and then also quite important as well, um, every destination we're going to, we have a guest lecturer come on from that destination to talk about where you're next visiting and everything. Um, and food, my uh, second favourite subject after cocktails. Um, it is part of the cruising experience, isn't it? it Anybody is, who's yeah. ever cruised, food is the thing, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, so, what can people expect? What sort of quality of food can people expect on cruises? Very, very high standard. In some cases, I think it opens up doors to, you know, an experience where you just perhaps wouldn't have had that opportunity. Um, Nobu restaurant, for example, you know, there's a waiting list to get onto this restaurant in London and you can go and eat and, and have the tasting menu. Um, it's incredible. Uh, also, uh, you have... Uh, Prego, an Italian restaurant that, that's very, very good. 
Um, I mentioned the main dining room, I love the experience of that, but right through from kind of relaxed um, grill-like dining right through to spe the speciality restaurants like Nobu. Um, would you say, as you were saying about the open dining area, I was thinking, oh, is it is cruising a very social thing? Do you get chatting and meet people and meet the same people every day? I guess it depends on your personality. You might tell from me chatting to you, I get chatting to quite a lot of people. I think you probably would as well. I do. <laughs> yeah, and you know, you'll start off the cruise on a table for two and by the end of it, you're on a table for six. But actually, you know, if you want to go away and be romantic or just, you know, you're not, not a very sociable person, then that's fine too. Again, you know, like I said, it's all about that choice. That's really what makes it different. Just jumping back to food as well, I, I must ask this question because um, if maybe you, you, you know, I don't know, you, you dairy intolerance or you celiac, to be trapped almost um, at sea and not have the right food must be a bit of a panic. No, it's the best place. Um, I actually, one of my crazy uh, fad diets, I was on dairy-free, wheat-free, and sugar free and um, I was trekking <laughs> I know fun free. <laughs> I'm fun free and I was checking the Himalayas and so I went on crystal the week before and so I actually tested it out because I wanted to see exactly how they would uh, be able to cope with a customer with very high demands and fantastic to the point where I was actually like I'm not hungry but they've just made this specially for me and I'm gonna have to eat it and yeah the, I mean they really nothing's too much trouble it's incredible well I, I guess because you're actually you've told the people relevant that this is my uh, dietary these are my dietary requirements whereas if you're on a land-based holiday you're eating at different restaurants every mm -hmm. night so to go through the conversation every single yeah. time must be tiresome yeah so I can understand why it works like that um, I just wonder about your favourite destination that you've been on on a cruise. I think my favourite destination has to be Europe. Oh, really? Yeah. Now yeah. I'm surprised yeah, I because do, yeah. you're a seasoned traveller. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, so what's the appeal of Europe? I mean, because we're almost saying to people, look, if you want to try cruising, and Natalie says, Europe. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. It, it's, it's easy to get to from home. And I love the fact that you wake up every single destination, every single day, sorry, in a different destination. If you're a bit of a culture vulture, um, I love Italy. I, I, I cruised um, Istanbul to Rome a couple of years ago and I hadn't really experienced, I'd been to Rome and that was it. And I absolutely was blown away by, you know, all, all the history, the culture. And I think in Europe, you really get to experience that because you go to so many different countries within one cruise. But then, you know, it's hard to choose because South America is also very, is incredible as well. But, but it tends to be a lot longer. Yeah, it, I, that would have been my next question is, if we were saying to people, um, you know, have a little taster of a cruise, mm. how many days do you think we'll, we'll get somebody? Five, six nights, yeah. And we do, so we split our main 12 and 16 night cruises into five, six night bite size. We call them getaway cruises. They're brilliant. If you've never cruised before and you're a bit nervous about not wanting to be on a cruise, you know, you're not sure how you, if you're going to enjoy it, five or six nights is a great introduction. And then we tend to, customers then travel with us on a longer cruise. Uh, my other worry is becoming seasick. Um, you know, you commit to a, a three week cruise yeah. that's all singing all dancing and then if you get seasick does it happen it's not happened when I've been on a cruise um, we're quite big ships I mean we're 68,000 tons and 50 51,000 tons so that that's that's pretty big so it would have to be very very choppy waters I guess again if it was me and I was I was nervous about seasickness I mean, it's very different being out on a dinghy, say, in the Isle of Man to going, to going on a big... <laughs> Around the Med. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very, very different. And again, that's another thing is choosing it. You know, the Med waters, very calm. You perhaps wouldn't want to choose the Drake Passage down in Antarctica for your first cruise. Oh, maybe, okay. maybe get your sea legs. Um, now, what about being pampered? Um, it goes hand in hand for me uh, with a holiday. And I know that on cruises now, you can get your hair done, you can be pampered. You can also obviously visit the gym because you've got to, because you've eaten your body weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, the, um, the spa facilities on board are fantastic. Um, everything from being wrapped in seaweed right through to, like you said, getting your nails, getting your hair done for the formal night. I, it's all part of going on holiday, isn't it? Part of, for it certainly is for me, going away, being able to relax in the spa, sit in the jacuzzi with a glass of bubbles and, and have a couple of treatments. 
Do you think that people who cruise, as a rule, are organised? Because when I chat to people about cruising, it's being pampered, which you've got to book, you've got to be, you've got to be good about this. Excursions, do we need to book those? And also, um, people who cruise a lot, they know what ships they want to be on and they know what cabins they want, don't they? So do you think, as a rule, if you're new to cruising, you need to start thinking about it sooner rather than later? Don't leave it to the last minute. Uh, yes, yes, because we do, it does get booked up, especially certain itineraries. If it's, you know, New Year in Sydney, that's that's really going to go ever so fast. Um, yeah, 2016, we're already selling 2017, 2018. So certainly in the cruise industry, you do book um, far and ahead. But that's not to say that you can't think, you know, actually, I'd like to go away later this year. Always check availability. And yeah, there might be something there. There you. might be. Uh, what about your favourite excursion that you've ever done? The thing that took your breath away? I think it would have to be, or was a toss up between two. I'm not very good you at can choosing have two. a oh, okay. You can have two, I'll let okay, you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm <generous>. um, <laughs> Ephesus in um, Kusadasi. Um, we went in the day and it was very busy, and you're trying to read everything, and there's lots of tourists. And it's hot. And it's hot. Yeah. And then, so we went back in the evening. There was only about 30 of us and they put some shawls around us because it was six o'clock in the evening in September. It was beautiful. The sun was setting. We had the whole whole place to ourselves. So we got to wander around the park for an hour, just leisurely looking at everything that we'd seen earlier that day, um, but in our own time. And then we had a string quartet in the, in the old um, amphitheatre, which was just beautiful. It sounds stunning. It was. What would be your, you said you had two, you yeah, were going to let you. Yeah, private tour of the Sistine Chapel. So there was about five of us, so when I say private tour, but anyone that's ever been to the Sistine Chapel, queued up, looked up for three seconds, come back down again and, and realise you're being ushered out. Um, it's weight, it's worth and gold. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you for opening up the world of cruising to us and making you're it sound welcome. so exciting. Hopefully we've, we've wet some appetites there. Now, just a quick reminder about this before we head off. It's our first time guide to cruise holidays and it's absolutely free of charge. Just give us a call 03330 032 216. Calls will be charged at standard network rates. And don't forget, you can also ask for a copy through our website, www.holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk, where you can also get in touch with your questions for future programmes. Okay, that's all we've got time for on today's edition of the Holiday and Cruise Clinic. My huge thanks to Natalie Reed and thanks to you for watching. See you next time. Bye.